We are in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and we're on a little bit of bonefish excursion. After four days of rigorous travel, we had made it to the Caribbean islands. Uh, a bit apprehensive right now as we inch our way out to the ocean here, because uh, once we're out there, we're on our own for the next 14 days. Hold on, stop, stop! Coming from freshwater backgrounds, we were entering a brand new world of fly fishing. You're out there, you're baking in the sun. It almost kind of seems like you're on a different planet. This whole trip is a DIY trip, so it's really us figuring it out as we go. Ah, hey, uh, this flight didn't really pan out up here, so we're gonna bounce down below you guys. Steve and I are out here just getting our asses whooped by some bonefish. Fortunately, after a few days of grinding it out, Brian and I landed our first Go ever bonefish. There he is. There he goes. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> oh, there he is, dude. With Brian and I on the board, it was time to shift our focus to getting Adam and Steve on bonefish. Oh no, he's headed to the mangroves. Don't go in there. All right. Before we get into the episode, I want to let you guys know that we are 4,420 subscribers away from reaching 100k. My goal with Wildfly has always been to share real and meaningful stories through the lens of the outdoors. I'm a firm believer that outdoor activities such as fly fishing can lead us down a more fulfilling path in life. And if our films have had even a sliver of influence on you finding those activities or just spending more time outside, it would mean the world if you subscribed. Oh, there we go. Everything that we've been able to do and the films that we're able to create are all thanks to you guys believing in us. So, to thank you for that, when we do hit 100,000 subscribers, we are going to be choosing one lucky subscriber to join us on an epic adventure next year. So, if you want to help us reach our goal of 100k and potentially have a chance to fish with us next year, make sure you subscribe. We seriously appreciate you all, especially those of you who have been here since the beginning. And now, let's get into the episode. I poured many coffee this morning, so I'm a little upset. The bacon smells delicious. Adam stole the good rod. It's very windy. It's bullshit. I bought that rod with my own money. Thank you, dude. <laughs> well, Blue Wine bought that rod with our own money. Oh my god. I'm watching the credit card bills more often now. That's why we're broke. Everybody out there watching wondering why we don't have flies. It's because man spends all our money on fishing trips and not on flies. That's not, that's not factual. That's media marketing and research. That's what I tell the IRS. That's what you tell me. <laughs> so, me and Scotty are on. We've been given the slowest dinghy uh, with this little Tahatsu on there. Uh, doesn't have much power compared to the other one. The other one is about 10 miles an hour faster. Wow! But it, it is like night and day how fast that dinghy is. Like they're already way out there waiting the flat and we just got here and they've, they're ways out there so they've been here for a minute. It's been not ideal conditions for this little dinghy. So we're here now and uh, we're gonna look for some bonefish. Well, let's see if that school is still. I don't see him anymore. Mm -hmm. I lost track of him. Good signs. We're seeing some marine life, as we said yesterday. 
kind of think being able to see some see some things on the flat makes makes uh, makes you feel better. We saw a turtle. We saw some box fish. Uh, Stephen just saw a shark. Uh, you know, a smaller shark, not the uh, one that eats bonefish sharks. But the, you know, anyways, we also saw a barracuda, which is you know marine death. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I guess he's here for the same reason we are, trying to find bonefish. So <laughs> we'll see what we can do. I don't know where this group came from. Maybe they came from further in, or maybe we just kind of came up behind them. But there was a group of fish that we ended up getting behind. We were kind of coasting in, and I was like, there they are. Now they're in the middle? Yep. How do you want to approach it? Both of us together? Get the wind to our back. Holy sh Yeah. <laughs> a lot of bone fish. So we kind of walk up to them. We get, we start getting set. They kind of circled around and were coming straight at us. I did what you did, that little... Oh, oh son of a... Keep going. No, uh, I think I'm off. Keep going, strip. What? I'm pretty... I'm off. I think so. Oh. Hey. He probably ran right at you. Yeah, you're right. Can I fight him now? Yeah, just, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, you know how to fight a fish. No, I don't. No. <laughs> you ever see me fight a fish? Yo, where are you ever been in your backing? The carp count? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 No, I'm back in the fly line now. Oh, when he sees us? Yeah. He'll speak again. Oh. Yep. This is the place, I guess. Being, being, you were on something, I guess. This is the spot. This is the spot, Bond. You might just be on a piece of seagrass. You're burying some seagrass. Yeah, I know. I still got the fish there. I saw him splash yeah. a second half. Oh! You might, when he comes at you, you better be walking backwards and reeling. Uh huh. I think I'm. I think it came off. I think he came off the seagrass. Well, boys, we almost had another one. I got a good set on it. The problem was I had a big old thing of seaweed that was on my line there. And so when it started running at me, I just lost pressure on it. Because even with me backing up and trying to reel in on it, that seaweed would just drop in my line right there. That's the story I'm going with. Yep, I like it. <laughs> That's your reality. That's my perception of reality, at least. All right, so I'm rigging up a separate eight weight for us. We brought quite a few rods on this trip. We brought a couple tins just in case we ran across something a little bigger, like maybe some permit, tarpon, or uh, barracuda. So we've also got some sevens and eights. The seven saltwater rods are great. Back up in the mangroves where there's not a lot of wind and you need a really, really stealthy cast. But out here on the bigger flats, I really like the eight weight. Um, I'd say that's probably the most common bonefish rod. So we've got uh, a, quite a few eight weights uh, from G Loomis. We've got the Asquith and the NRX. All of these fish that you catch, you're gonna wind up putting them on the reel. So your reel is even more important in salt water than fresh water. And then last, line is one of the most important things when you're fishing. And we've definitely stressed that quite a bit in our other videos. 
but even more so with salt, I feel like. Having the right line paired to the rod and paired to the situations is key. Airflow has really helped us out with this. We've got some of their brand new Airflow lines uh, that we've been using with their new Ridge 2.0 technologies. They cast incredibly well. They float super great. You guys have definitely got to go check out some of these lines. Let's go. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> So if you guys are curious, go test cast this line at your local fly shop, or if you're interested in picking some up, there's also a link below. It does something to you when you see that school of bonefish. They're one of the hardest, like pound for pound, one of the hardest fighting fish in the ocean. Their adaptive technique, obviously they're pretty camoed in the water. They are pretty hard to see, but really they can outrun just anything else in the water. And I think that's the reason that they're so much fun and that's the reason that that first run is just so incredible. You're out there in the flats and you're looking and looking, looking, and after a while you're like, am I gonna see anything? I'm just looking at the freaking water. You wanna see a bonefish so bad, and so you start seeing rocks that are in the waves and you're like, that's a fish. And you get up to it, it's just a rock. So when you finally see those fish and you see a school and it's moving, you're like, holy shit. Can I get up these two? 50, maybe, no, it was like more like 30. You're pointing right at them, maybe a little bit down. See that, see those tails right there? Going over that sandy, I can't even describe Yeah, it. you're good. Okay, yeah, they're a little, little far out, not quite in casting distance. No. Okay, yeah, I see them. Okay. Let's just see what they do. There's a bunch of them in there. Right here? Be a little out of reach. God damn There he is. Yes. <laughs> Dude, he was like 10 feet in front of me. Oh my gosh. circled on around for some Dude, yeah, they kept circling. Come on now. That was dope. That's a thick bone. Is this not a bonefish? No. Oh my gosh. It's some sort of I'm not sure. Careful. Well, not quite a bonefish, but man, that was cool. We think this is called a blue runner. That's what the locals had told us earlier, but Aiden fought nonetheless. Yeah. Sweet. Here he goes. Woo! On the board, baby. Blue runner. Sure. 
<laughs> we had we had a huge school of bonefish moving in, and they were not but 10, 15 feet in front of me, and I was ducked down, and saw one of them spook, and I thought the whole group was done, and uh, sure enough, one of them was on the line. So sweet. Let's go see if we can't find find a few more up here. Are they right there? Oh, f well, gone now. He ran the worst way possible. It is so hard to cast in this. If I, anything this way, anything this way, just game over. They're coming back around, they're facing me right here. See them moving? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Here we go, baby. I led him by like nine feet. These guys are so spooky. Let's go over there to him. Running towards me. Still running at me. They might be small. Oh. oh. Still not done. The wind calmed down just enough. This flat's covered. Wow. Man, he looks about the same size as the other one. Maybe even larger. See that? Shots, dude. 
from there we entered the time portal where the days just fused together. A lot of days had passed and we hadn't even noticed. Like, they went by like that. Make coffee, breakfast, we run out, you know, same route, same, looking for the same fish, and our fish weren't there. You know, it's starting to feel like we we're getting things figured out, figuring out where the fish are. And then just in, just like that, it's like these fish don't exist. We had kind of, I feel like towards the end of those like three or four days, like kind of ran out of our honey hole. We we're like, well, crap, like, what are we gonna do? Part of living on these vessels is uh, you got to get used to w one another and, and uh, not having personal space. We ain't got no cheese out here, so we're just going to rip the ketchup. You know, you're on a pretty much a floating RV, and so yep. the toilets are a little bit different. And so my burger kind of went straight through me, you know, no normal process, and I I had to go. Now I'm about to pull the out the <laughs> no, this is good content. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Get that evil out, son. Our little bathroom has like a, it has that eject button for like when you do a big, a big time number two. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> 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 I come up there and it's like um, it's like a, a scene out of like a war movie where I come out of the water and there's like combat going on. <laughs> Scotty's over here like filming. That was, woo, how many flushes did you do? Did you do multiple flushes? I did like three. I wonder. I don't think your your holding tank is close. So? This is this is your doing right yeah, here. Yeah, Steve's thrown up because of you. <laughs> really? Yeah. No way. Way. <laughs> You'll just smell a really bad smell. Oh yeah, oh. like well, I think when you were flushing, because it happened like three. It happened like three times. It made me puke. That's <laughs> that bad. So we got some intel from, I would say, one of the most trusted sources of intel, which was a drunk local fisherman at, that we met at a beach bar. And uh, I mean, that's about as good as local intel can get besides, say like a Vietnam vet at a breakfast diner. So, yeah, you're right, very trusted. Right, that's trusted information. I would say number two in trust is the uh, drunk uh, drunk fisherman at a bar. Yeah, number, oh yeah. Number he, one, right. actually served our country. Right. So ours a little cooler than the last flat we were on. This is a spot that that uh, local fisherman we met at the bar told us about. He was a gear fisherman, did a lot of reef fishing, but I don't know, sounds like it's pretty good intel to me. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to find some fish up there.
Coming into this trip, we had a bunch of flats that we kind of scouted out on on the maps and made some pins and everything. And one of those things where you just you just have to know. You see it, it looks so juicy on the map, and you just got to go check it out. And sometimes they don't pan out. So if you can find someone we kind of got a um, little little slack time here in between the tides while they're shifting. Fishing wasn't what we wanted it to be, so it's all biology. So we've been talking the whole trip just how bonefish stage up on like a flat. They, they stage up like right next to like deeper water. It's like right next to the flat. It's like an easy access point to get on and off. And so the bonefish right now on this tide are kind of staged up in the little bit deeper water about to come onto the flat. And so that means that we are staged up, not on the beach, but the, uh, the biome above the beach staged up to just to go up onto the flat. It's it's all like a circ, circle alive type. Never mind. Just, <laughs> just like the bonefish are staged, we're also staged. We're staging up on these uh, pina coladas while the bonefish are staging up on the crabs. Us and the bonefish are just waiting for the same tide. As soon as that tide hits right, They're up there we're both right on arm. that flat. Yeah. I'm tailing on the flat. I'm tailing on this pina colada. I'm just tailing. <laughs> We heard some rumblings on the island of maybe a different flat. There maybe was another flat that we didn't see or that we didn't really pay much attention to. You know, little ways over from where we were. We looked at on the maps and we were like, what is that? Look how it butts up next to the bank. Yeah, this is dope. I'm not mad at trying this real quick. While we're here, I mean, that's ankle deep. So, it's high tide right now, and just us red fishing in the past, wherever the shallowest water is, we find more fish there. So these fish are scavengers. They like to pop up on these little flats that are that are usually dry. So we're taking advantage of that right now. We're gonna walk this whole flat all the way up and uh, I'm super excited. We essentially spread out on the flat. We had just gotten out of the boat. You know, you kind of like get in this mental thing where you're like, all right, I got to grind it out here for a bit before we start seeing some fish. No. We get up on that flat, and here come a school of like six bonefish. Uh, 30, uh, 40 feet. I'm seeing the nervous water. Yep. They're coming our way, Adam. They're coming our way. Where'd they go? I lost. Oh, they're still there. Slightly to the left. See them? Not yet. All right, 24. Hey, a little bit further left. Yeah, yeah. You got them? Yeah. They're slowly making their way our way. Oh, oh dude, they're right in front of us. You might believe it. Cass, hey, watch out, dude. God, I don't see it. Where's the fish? Yep, yep. see it. They're headed our way. There you go. Oh no, he's headed to the mangroves. Don't go in there. <laughs> he 
He's around some shit in the mangroves. That one's bigger than the ones on my line. It's a good one. Ugh. Oh, he's a chunk. <laughs> that's a that's a new PB for me. Look at that dude. Man. Woo! It. My heart's racing. <laughs> you feel I'm, like I'm shaking. <laughs> My uh, it was it was everything was textbook. We uh, rolled up on this flat, saw these fish coming. I mean, and he just tailed. It was I mean everything was just perfect textbook for what we were looking for. Finally, my first, my second real cast of bonefish this trip, and uh, ran into this guy. So we're ecstatic. That was great. That was textbook. I'm on the board finally for the trip and uh, could not have asked for a better situation. Steve, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm you gotta do the you gotta do the fun part now. There he goes. There He's off. About 40 yards out. These guys are going to try to get around him. Tails, tails, tails. He's got a big school right up here, too. I don't know why. 